chapter 6. Matthew, the 6th chapter. I didn't even think my allergies were bothering me today until I got up here and tried to start singing. All of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden it, I noticed that my uh, breathing. Well, we can't have our preacher miss out no other weekend. <laughs> right? Uh, ready. Matthew chapter 6, and we're going to begin at verse 25. Oh, and, uh, and the word of the Lord reads, Matthew 6, beginning at verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink, for yet excuse me, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the valley, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothe the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you? O ye of little faith, therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Master, we thank you, God, for today. We thank you, Lord, for your word. And Master, we just ask God today that you would allow your anointing and your presence and your power to re uh, reside upon your messenger at this hour. God, help me to deliver the word that you've placed in my heart for this moment in time, that the people of God might be encouraged thereby. Help us, Lord, to leave this place on a higher plateau than the plateau that we walked upon as we came in. Help us to find a deeper place in you. Master, grant it, we pray, for we ask it in none other than Jesus' precious name. Amen. amen. Praise God and amen. I just want to talk to us for a little while. This will not be very long at all this morning. On the topic of this way we call faith. You know, if you watch a lot of preachers on TV today, uh, all of them want to tell you that they preach faith. And the topic of the day is generally, supposedly, faith. And we're constantly being told by uh, preachers on television and preachers in churches that uh, they are preachers of faith. And yet, somehow or another, God is being represented as a genie in a bottle or as a waiter with a uh, towel placed over his arm. And it is somehow we're supposed to believe that the only purpose God serves in our life, the only purpose that faith serves in our life, is getting and achieving what we want. And if you notice, I, I keep watching all, some of I don't watch them for a whole lot of time, really not crazy about them, but I watch some of these TV preachers, you know, and they get on there, and nowadays all they ever talk about is money. You know, everything is about money, everything's about possessions, everything's about what you own and what you can have. And I sit there and watch them, and I think, well, of course, you know, you've got to say what you're saying, because if you didn't, nobody's going to send you any money. You know, if you didn't make people believe that by sending me your money, you're going to be blessed. You're going to wind up, you know, with all this, and God's going to prosper you. But, you know, it's interesting because the truth today of serving God and being a child of God is not about uh, God being there for us in the sense of 
giving us all the little things we want, all the extras, and so that we kind of have an inside line, you know, and we're able to get all these wonderful things. But the truth of faith is that God promises that those that live and walk by faith, that our needs will be met. Amen. Did you hear me now? Yes. Not our wants, but our needs will be met. I'm going to tell you, if you've never been in a place in your life where your needs weren't met, then maybe you'd appreciate what it is to have your needs met. Amen? Amen. See, there's a lot of people who have never been in a place where they've had to go for two or three or four days and not have anything to eat. There's a lot of people never had to live out of their car, or a lot of people have never had to go to a homeless shelter, and therefore, they don't understand the concept of how wonderful and how precious it is simply to have your needs met. Amen. Amen. To be able to go to bed at night and be secure and be warm and have your belly filled and not have your stomach growling and hurting because you hadn't eaten anything in a day or two. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. I've been in some spots in my life. I moved away from home when I was 16 years old and came to Texas, as a matter of fact. And uh, I have been in some really tough spots. And I've gone for days where I didn't have anything to eat. I've gone for periods of time where I literally did not have a thing in the world that I could put in my stomach. And I had enough conviction and I had enough uh, morality that I wasn't going to go steal anything either. You know, I love when people say, well, you know, I was hungry, so I went and stole. But I'm going to tell you, that's the test of your character, is when you are hungry. And when things are tough, whether all of a sudden you're going to go against what you believe. Amen? Mm -hmm. And the, the walk of faith that God has called us to, this way we call faith, it's not about being able to drive a Lincoln. It's not about being able to live in a 14-room house with five and a half bathrooms. That's not what faith is about. Faith is about walking with God and doing it in such a way that we have full and complete confidence that our needs will be supplied. And we don't have to worry about tomorrow. We don't have to fret about what's going to happen the next day or the next day because we have that inward confidence that God is looking out for me. Amen? Amen. And it's a, it just it breaks my heart today to see how Christianity has been reduced to this consumerism. Mm -hmm. You know, the spirit of greed that's in the world has now <coughs> taken over the church. And the church is taking its cue from the world rather than vice versa. The church isn't offering the world anything different. No, because the church is now operating on the same principles as the world. It's operating on the same premise as the world. The world's all about grab, 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 get what you can, get what you can. And the church is teaching the same thing, but they're trying to put a <coughs> so-called faith twist on it. You can have it all, bless God, hallelujah. You know, it's all about... Uh, Believe in God. If you'll believe God, then you can have everything. You can have it all. And the truth of the matter is, Jesus, in speaking to his disciples, uh, spoke about the fact that our needs, our most basic needs, are met by our Heavenly Father without our having to do a thing. Amen. Amen. So a lot of people spend all their time praying because they want something better. I want a better house. I want a bigger house. I want a prettier car. I want a nicer husband. I want, a, I want this. I want that. And they spend all their time. And yet, listen to me now, God has promised that if we walk by faith, we don't have to ask him for any of our most basic needs because he's already looking out for us. You hear me? See, you don't have to go to bed every night and beg God, Oh, Lord, please, Jesus, let there be groceries in my cupboard tomorrow, do you? Amen? No. <laughs> they're already there. Or, if they're not there, we generally have some ideas to where we can get them. But you see, the, the, the reality is, the Lord said, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. All what things? 
Well, let's see, according to Kenneth Copeland, that would be cars and houses and lands and jewelry and money in the bank. That's not what Jesus said. Look at the context of what I read to you this morning. The Lord specifically was speaking of uh, our most basic needs in terms of what we have to eat, what we have to wear. He said, these are, these are the most basic needs that we have, is to make sure that we're clothed, to make sure we have something to eat, to make sure we have a place to stay. And then he goes on to say, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things, what things, your most basic needs are going to be met. I'm going to tell you, uh, there are people in the church today, there are people in our, in our church even, I hate to say, uh, people who have been associated with our church over the last several years who are uh, in the habit of putting themselves in some pretty big pickles financially because they want, 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 and then they gripe and crab at God and accuse God because they go through hard times trying to support all of their wants. Amen. Amen. And I've got news for you. I realize there are a lot of TV preachers. I realize there's a lot of preachers out there that kind of represent that this is the way it is, you know, that, that we're supposed to be constantly trying to get more and have more. But I'm going to tell you something. Don't you dare ever bring an accusation against God when you put yourself in a mess. Come on now. Amen. Because walking by faith, let me tell you what walking by faith, let me tell you what this way we call faith is really all about. This way we call faith is about following the Lord's leading, not leading the Lord. That's true. Amen. Hello now. It's not about telling God how you ought to live and how things ought to be for you. It's about letting the Lord lead you. Letting the Lord help you to be in the right situations at the right times at the right places at the right times. Amen? Amen? There's so many people in the church world today, they think it's their job to tell God, well, this is what I want next. Okay, Lord, I, I got this job. Now, this is what I want next. Now, I want a big house. Okay, Lord, now that I got that, now here's what I want next. And they think it's their job to lead the Lord by the nose and help Him to know what's next on their shopping list. When the reality is that walking by faith and serving the Lord is about following His lead. I'm going to tell you a little secret. God will keep you out of more trouble than you could ever get yourself into. Amen. I'm serious. You learn to live by faith. And the Lord will keep you out of more grief than you could ever imagine. I've had situations in my life where uh, I remember as a young person living here in Texas many years ago, because I'm getting up there, you know, and uh, I had a situation where I was living in my car for a period of about two months. I had a great big, thank God back in those days we still had these enormous cars. <laughs> I had a great big old Pontiac station wagon, and I literally was living in my car, and I was working at a McDonald's and had my station wagon parked in the back of the McDonald's say, well, why, brother, why did that happen? Well, I'll, t I'll tell you, just so you don't think it was some goofy thing. Uh, I had an apartment on the back of this lady's house, and she came down with cancer. And the apartment on the back of her house that I stayed in was connected to her house by a doorway between my kitchen and her kitchen. See, I, she had kind of converted this back area and made a little studio apartment out of it. Well, she came down very sick and needed that apartment for a, a live-in aid to come in and help her. Well, at that time, I was going to school. I was working. Didn't make a whole lot of money. You know, I was just a high school kid. And uh, I didn't have the resources to move into a new apartment. So I wound up, but she needed my apartment pretty quick, you know. And, and I wasn't about to give her any grief, so I just said, okay. And I, I stayed in my car for a little while. So that's why I was staying in my car. But uh, I had people that would come along. There were two specific cases uh, where somebody came and at different times offered me a place to stay. Well, you can come stay with me. Well, you don't have to worry about a thing. You can just come stay with me. And you know what? The Spirit of the Lord spoke to my heart and said, don't you do it. You're better off in your car. You hear what I'm telling you? Sometimes you're better off 
in a situation that to some folks they see it as being you're worse off. But sometimes you're better off in that place than you would be in a place that you think looks better to the naked eye. Do you follow what I'm saying? And living by faith and walking by faith is not about having all kinds of stuff. Walking and living by faith is about following the leading of the Lord and trusting His greater wisdom. God knows better than I do. I don't know why He wanted me to stay in my car for a couple extra days or a couple extra weeks, whatever the case might have been. But all I know is I trust Him enough to know that when He sounds a warning in my spirit and said, No, you don't want to do that, sweetheart, you don't want to do that. Do you hear what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you, God can spare us so much grief. You know how many relationships, Paige, we could, could have been spared? Do you know how much heartache in our lives we could have been spared if we'd let God do the leading? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know how many marriages we wouldn't even have gotten Amen. into sometimes if we'd have let God do the leading? Amen. You know how many houses we wouldn't have bought and then gone into debt trying to replace the roof and fix the plumbing and do all the work that needed to be done that we didn't see when we first bought it if we'd allowed God to do the leading? Do you hear what I'm telling you? Amen. Do you know how many of us would have had a seamless transportation to and from work if we'd have bought that Chevy instead of the Caddy? Hello now. Hello. You hear what I'm telling you? But you see, we want to lead God. We want to tell Him what it is we want. We want to tell Him what it is we deserve. We want to tell Him what it is that we're supposed to have. Because there are preachers out there that have made us believe that that's what faith is about. Amen. Believe in God for the better. Believe in God for the bigger. No, 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 no. I believe God enough to take whatever He sends my way. Because... For whatever reason, he knows far better than I why I'm in a better position here than if I were over here. Amen. Amen. That's what faith's about. Do you understand what I'm saying today? This is just a very, very simple. I'm not preaching like y'all know how I normally preach sometimes. Get to stomping and snorting and spitting on everybody and, you know, baptize the whole crowd. But, <laughs> but today, this is just a simple word of exhortation because I've heard people very recently I had somebody that was getting upset because uh, she is in a very difficult financial position. Her uh, job, uh, they'd had hours cut and, you know, her income was, was suffering and what have you. And she's having a very hard time meeting her expenses. And then she had the audacity to make the comment. Well, you know, God seems to answer everybody else's prayers, but he just don't seem to answer mine. And uh, I'm going to tell you, I have a real problem with that. I don't care if you're my mother, my sister, my brother, my cousin, my nephew, my aunt. I don't care if you're the, my favorite person in the whole world. You start bringing an accusation against God, I have a problem with that. And you say, well, but brother, you know, sometimes that's just the way you feel. Well, let me tell you what this individual's problem is. The old preacher has been saying for the last three or four years that the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said that the bottom was about to fall out of our economy. Have I not been saying that for the last Amen. three or four years? Mm -hmm. I've been saying, be careful. Do not put yourself in a position where you go buy an expensive car and have to make big payments or, you know, uh, do whatever you have to do. I've been saying this now for years. The Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said that the economy is about to fall apart. It already has. So. Yeah, well, it is now, but I've been saying this going back four years. And I said, you know, do not move yourself into a housing situation that if you're in something right now and it's reasonable and you can manage it, stay there. Don't, this is not a good time to be making moves into more expensive, you know, that whole consumerism thing. You know, this is not the time to be trying to climb up to something, quote, better. And I warned and I warned and I warned for years I was saying this. What did this individual do? Ignored every word I said. Went out, leased herself the biggest, bestest, nicest, prettiest house she could find. Cost twice what she had been paying. 
at her previous residence. Are you talking about your mother right Turn around and rented out this big, beautiful, expensive house. And I had said to her, I said, you know, some of your work is part-time work. It's, it's side work. You know, it's not your main job. I said, it's really not wise to count on that kind of income as a steady, consistent income. You know, if you have a full-time job, let's say, and then you have maybe a little part-time job where you work a week or two, or a, a day or two out of the week, whatever, what you really need to do in order to operate wisely is base your living expenses on your full-time job's income. That's true, amen. Don't even count. The, you, do you understand what I'm saying? Don't count that as consistent income especially in the line of work that she's in, because those side jobs come and go. I mean, they can go at the drop of a hat. But you know what she did? She made every excuse under the sun why I was wrong. Well, no, that isn't so, because, uh, you know, these part-time jobs are going to be there for me always. I'll never have, I'll never lose them. They're always there for me. And I heard all the excuses for why the preacher didn't know what he was talking about. Guess what happened? She gets into this big expensive house. She has all these incredible expenses. I mean, all of a sudden, the electric bill is as much, almost, as my rent every month. Because it's such a big house, you know, has all this stuff going on. And all of a sudden, all of her part-time work, boom, went right down the drain. None. Doesn't have any more. Now, this is after she swore up and down to me, bless God, no, that part-time work is just as, I can count on it just as sure as I'm alive. It'll always be there for me. And I tried to guide. I tried to offer some advice. I said, listen, and I, and Tommy was there. He knows I'm telling the truth. I don't know how many times I kept gently, you know, trying to say, listen, I'm telling you, the economy is about to go haywire. It's the bottom's about to fall out of this thing. You really need to be careful about these kind of decisions. But did she listen? No, she didn't listen. Now she's going through all this strain and she's going through all this stress over finances and then wants to have the audacity to blame God. Oh, Do you follow what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. God, you God. see, honey... Faith isn't going into a house you can't afford. That's not faith, that's stupidity. Amen. There are a lot of people in the church world today that are in every bit as much debt, if not more, than unbelievers. Why? Because they think faith is sticking their neck out there and, and getting involved in something they can't afford. That's what they think. Well, that's the nature of faith, bless God. I'm supposed to just, if I want it, I'm supposed to just get out there and, and, you know, and God will provide. No, that's not the nature of faith. The nature of faith is not doing the leading, but doing the following. Amen. And letting God lead you. And let the Lord direct your path. Let Him guide your steps. Because I'll tell you what, I'd rather do things God's way and always have my needs met than do things my way and wind up stressed out of my mind. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's right. And that is the problem that we have. And, and I'm mentioning this today because we really need to guard against this in the church world today. Every preacher you watch on TV is going to tell you that if you'll give more money, if you'll do this, if you'll do that. I, if I've heard one preacher this week say it, I've heard at least probably 10 or 12 actually get up on television and say, I don't care what your finances look like. I don't care what your financial situation is. If you'll sow the seed, bless God, hallelujah, God will bless you back, and you'll get a harvest, and you'll, you'll reap the rewards, and blah, blah, blah. Of course, going to say that. they got to pay their bills. they got to pay their TV bills. But you know what? There are more people that I know today who have put these preachers to the test and it didn't work the way they said. Hello now. Amen. Because i got news for you. God is not a genie in a bottle. He's not there just to answer all of your, uh, your prayers and give you every little thing you've ever wanted and every little thing you ever want to ask for. What He's there to do is to be your Heavenly Father 
He's there to guide you and direct you, just like the preacher when he was trying to help certain people make the right decisions. That's what God's trying to do. He's not, it's not about, Daddy, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. No, no, no. It's about, let Daddy help you so that you can make the right decisions along the way and you will avoid more stress and more strain and more uh, heartache in your life than you ever can imagine. If you'll simply let the Lord do the leading. Amen. That's what faith's about. Is doing things God's way. Even when you don't quite understand. I told Tommy and Mom and, and Paige and all that. Uh, here a while back. We had rented, for a while we had rented a little house. And our church was meeting in this little house. And we were using it strictly for the church. Nobody lived there. It was just for the church. And it was nice, and we enjoyed it. It was comfortable. I had an office there, and we had a nursery there, and we had a lot of nice little amenities. We even were able to have a little bookstore in there. But the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me and said, You know what? You need to get this up. He said, Why don't you go to Garland and rent you a hotel up there? He said, That way you'll be paying half what you're paying here just for rent. Plus, you won't have to worry about any... Ut uh, utilities or anything, you know, you'll just be paying your so much a week and that's it. And uh, I didn't know why. I liked that little house. You know, I liked the location. I liked everything about it. Worked good for me. I had an office, you know. All of a sudden I had to give that up and I had to move all my office stuff back here to the house. And this poor place is so crowded and cluttered and, you know. But I did what God spoke to me to do. And do you know that within two weeks of our making that move, that our income was cut in half because people lost work and lost jobs and lost. Within two weeks, God had me prepared for it. I didn't have to react to it because we had acted proactively. Do you understand what I'm saying? He had already prepared us. He'd already put us in a position where, you know what? I didn't feel a minute stress. I wasn't stressed about it for one minute because when the, the income got cut, we were already in a position where our expenses had been cut. Do you follow what I'm saying? And then when the Lord spoke to me and laid on my heart and he said, okay, now you've got to make another move. I said, oh, Lord, what are we doing this time? He said, just meet at your house for now. We don't have that many people that we can't. Even if everybody was here, we just maybe about fill up this room. But, you know, I said, he said, just said, meet at your house for a while. Because that way you won't have any rent. You won't have to worry about paying a hotel. And that way you won't have to worry about all this. Well, we made that decision, and you know what? Something happened. And finances have almost flattened out. But you know what? We were ahead of the game. We weren't reacting to it. We were. We didn't have to respond to it because we were already a step ahead. Do you follow what I'm saying? Amen. What is this way we call faith? Is it about uh, leading God along and letting Him know what we want and what we need and where we want to be next? No. It's about learning to follow. Let Him lead. Let Him guide. Let Him direct. Because, sweetheart, if you let the Lord lead, I promise you He'll never lead you wrong. Amen. God will never lead you wrong. He'll never, I don't care if what he lays in your heart and in your spirit contradicts everything that you think. Well, but I, I think it'd be better for me to, to, you know, I think this would be better, or I think this decision would be better. If the Spirit of the Lord speaks to you and says, no, you don't want to do that, take it from me. You don't want to do that. Amen. Well, but this job pays twice as much. This job will be a lot better job. But the Spirit of the Lord speaking to your heart and saying, no, no, you don't want to do that. You know why? Because he knows you're going to take the job, and a month later, they're suddenly going to start laying everybody off, and you're going to lose your job. Amen. And here you are, thought you were in so much better a position. You understand what I'm saying? You thought you were in such a better position, only to find out that now you ain't got nothing. At least if you'd have stayed where, where you were at, you'd still have a job. It might still be half the salary, but half the salary is better than no salary. Amen. Amen. So I want to tell you today, the word of the Lord says, and I'm, I'm just about done, Galatians 6, 7, and 8, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, 
For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Now, a lot of these preachers on TV are going to tell you, yeah, the Bible said, if you sow, bless God, you're going to reap. Why, bless God, that's the promise of Scripture. Yes, it is. But look at the very next verse. Let's stay in context this morning. Paul goes on to say to the Galatian church, For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So what is Paul saying? He's saying, if you invest in your carnality, you're going to reap what carnality offers. Now some people hear the word carnality and immediately they're thinking sex and <laughs> thing. that's not what it means simply means if you're going to operate in, in your flesh and operate on your own intellect, then, sweetheart, all you're going to get back out of life is what your flesh and your intellect can get you. You hear what I'm saying? But if you're going to operate as a child of God, the Bible said, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. If you're going to allow God to lead you and you're going to sow into the Spirit, if you're going to invest into the Spirit and let God be the one who does the leading, then you're going to get back what God is able to provide for you rather than what you and your own intellect and your own abilities are going to be able to accomplish and achieve. And I got news for you. I used to say quite a bit, you know, uh, I've learned that you need to step back sometimes, let go and let God. We were talking about that earlier, Billy, right? Sometimes you just got to let go and let God. I'm going to tell you a little secret about God. There's not a thing in the world that we can do that God can't do better. Amen. Amen. There's not a thing in the world we can do that the Lord can't do better. So we are far better off sowing into the Spirit. We're far better off investing in our relationship with the Lord and letting Him do the leading. And us kind of stepping back a step and letting Him guide us. Where do you want us next? That's why the Apostle Paul said, I have learned to be content whatsoever state I am in. He said, you know what? I can be happy wherever I'm at. It's not about, I'm constantly looking for the next better place, or I'm constantly looking for the next better thing. No, he said, I've learned to be content in whatever state I'm in. Wherever I'm at, I'm happy there. Because if that's where God wants me, I know that that's probably the best place for me to be right then. Amen. Even if it's not our favorite place. He didn't say, I've learned to be delirious wherever I'm at. You know, we're not, always, we're not always ecstatic over every situation. But he said, I've learned to be content. And that ought to be the life of a believer. We ought to find a place of contentment, walking with the Lord. We, we ought to know, hey, you know what? I don't know why, but God's got me here. I'm living in this apartment. I'd rather be in a nice big house somewhere. You know, I'd rather have a lot of different things. But am I content? Absolutely. I, I haven't got a complaint one. I'm content because my needs are met. I'm satisfied. I know I'm where God wants me for this time. Don't know why he wants me here per se, but I'm happy to be here because this is where he wants me. In Romans chapter 8, the word of the Lord said, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. What does that mean? It means literally that the carnal mind is the enemy of God. Your mind will work against God if you let it. Amen. Your intellect will work against God if you let it. The carnal mind is enmity against God. What God will speak to us and show us sometimes is based on information that is not available to our naked eye. And therefore, our mind will be telling us, yeah, but I don't see a storm. I don't see any trouble. I don't see any problems. So therefore, why should, it, why should I not do this? Or why should I not go here or buy this or what have you? And yet the Spirit of the Lord's trying to lead us in a different direction because God's seeing things that we can't even, we don't have any ability to see. 
And our mind will work against God if we're not careful. Why? Because it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God, but ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Second Timothy, and I'm closing with this verse, Second Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4, the word of the Lord states, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. What's the first thing? that a soldier has to learn. When you go into the armed forces and you're going to serve in the armed forces, what's the very first thing a soldier has to learn? Take orders. To... You just said it. They learn how to take orders. take orders. They learn that there is a succession of authority. If that guy's got one stripe on his sleeve more than I do, then guess what? Whatever he says goes. I, it, it, uh, it doesn't matter whether he's a five-star general or he's a, he's a sergeant. You follow what I'm saying? If, he's, if he is higher up on that ladder than I am, I've got to salute him, and I have got to yield my will to his. Whatever he says do, I've got to do it. Do you know that is a hard lesson to learn? Yet the Apostle Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 2, he said, endure hardness as a what? A good soldier. Oh, Lord, you mean I've got to learn to take direction? I've got to learn? Now, you remember I was telling you a little while ago about this individual, and the preacher was trying real hard to help her make the right decisions and trying real hard? Now, see, I'm not the general. I'm just the drill sergeant. I'm just the one that God puts at, in your life and puts in, in ministry to try to help guide you in the right direction. But you know what? Sometimes it's wise to listen because I really am trying to help you. I'm going to tell you a little secret. I don't get any bonuses. I don't get millions. I don't make any money uh, by helping folks make the right decisions. You know, I don't. there's nothing in it for me, so to speak. But I, that's my job. That's what God's called me to do, to be in that place, to help his people make the right decision, and to walk in wisdom, and to walk in love. And uh, a lot of people just don't understand that as a child of God, honey, you got to learn to take orders. And I'm not talking about from me. Don't misunderstand me. But I'm saying when the Lord speaks to you, you really need to yield to that. Because the general has spoken. And if... A soldier, the Apostle Paul said, a man of war does not entangle himself with the affairs of this life. No, you've got to be focused on your task. You've got to be focused on the task at hand. He said, if you get too involved in what's going on around you, you're going to be distracted. And you know what happens to distracted soldiers? They wind up dead. Amen. Amen. He said, no, a soldier that's a good soldier is trying to do what? According to 2 Timothy 2, 3, and 4, he's trying to please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. Trying to please the one who's chosen you to be a soldier. So therefore, our lives ought to be focused on investing in our relationship with God. Our lives ought to be focused on walking by faith. The Word of God says, for we live by faith, we walk by faith, and not by sight. We don't operate on the principle of what we see because, Billy, what we see and what God sees are completely different. We look down the road and we say, you know what, this, I'll always have this job. I'll always have this husband. I'll always have this life. I'll always have this house. And God's looking down the road and saying, yeah, but you know what, there's going to be a turn down there that you didn't expect. And the things you thought you're always going to have, you're not always going to have. So don't you think it's kind of wise to defer to God's greater wisdom? Don't you think it's kind of wise to follow his leading and let him be the one that leads in the dance, not you? Because he knows what's best for us. He's watching out for us. The Lord said, Behold the fowls of the air. 
Matthew 6, 26. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. And then I love this next phrase. Are ye not much better than they? He says, don't you think your Father's looking out for you? If he's going to watch out for a little bird, don't you think that your Father's going to look out for you? Don't you think he's going to watch your back and make sure that only the best comes your way? If you stand with me this morning, I'm all done. Just wanted to offer a simple word of exhortation today. This way we call faith. It's not about believing for bigger and better. It's about trusting God and walking in the direction that he would have us to go. Master, we thank you, God, for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you, Lord, today that we have a relationship with you and a knowledge of you that allows us to follow your leading. Lord, there are so many times in my life that I could have walked into some serious trouble. I could have been in some very difficult situations, but your spirit was there to guide me. And Lord, because of faith in my life, I knew to trust you. I knew to lean on you and not to lean on my own understanding. As your word promises, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding in all thy ways. Acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Master, help this word to find its way into our hearts today that we might learn day by day to trust you more, to lean on you more heaven, uh, heavily because, Lord, you are able to lead us and guide us in the way that we ought to go. Grant it, we pray, for we ask it in none other than Jesus' wonderful, wonderful name. Amen. God bless you and amen. I appreciate your being here today. I hope I kept that a little bit uh, succinct. So we didn't go too late. Now, what do we want for lunch? Uh, have any ideas? Huh? Should I just bring something back? Or are we yeah, yeah. But I'm just trying to see what, 